Hi and welcome back. Um, it's a bit of a rainy Saturday morning here um, so it's time to catch up with a few bits and pieces. Um, while I was at it I thought uh, and before I start the next job on the bike is to give you a quick catch up of where I am on the sports sir. Okay first change you might know is that uh, I've actually gone for proper indicators now on the back. Um, you might recognize them, they're the Motone items. Um, they're quite nice. Um, and the same is on the front. Um, still mounted to the brackets that I made. Um, I like them. They do their job quite well. Um, the one thing I would say is that um, because they've only got 10 watt bulbs in them, because they're quite a small little housing, um, I've had to run a resistor because uh, it wasn't enough to actually run the uh, Harley TSM. Um, if you put it onto hazards, there's enough resistance, um, but just left or right indicators, it wasn't enough. So there's a resistor I've had to put back into the circuit, but with that they work fine. Um, because I wasn't expecting that, I've ended up with the resistor on the front because I put the I put the rear indicators on first. So when I get time, I'm going to move that around and I'm going to stick the resistor under the seat plugged into the back um, ones and take it from there. Um, so that's another project, uh, fairly straightforward. But I also need to buy some various bits of uh, sleeving and such so that I can do the job properly and neatly. At the moment it works, but but needs some tidying up. Um, the latest purchase is a fork brace. Um, now, because I've got these stupidly wide bars um, on there, the bike uh, is very subject to speed wobbles. Um, it will take you all over the lane if you uh, take it up to speed. 99% um, of that is down to hand pressure on the actual bars. Um, it's a bit like when, you're, when you've got a crosswind, a gusty crosswind, and you clutch onto the bars too tightly and you overcompensate and the bike's all over the place. If you let the pressure off, you relax, uh, the bike will, bike will find its own line. What I find is that the wide bars exaggerate that effect um, and you get a little bit of wobble um, from a poor road surface, you grip the bars a bit tighter and all of a sudden the bike's going from white line to white line. Uh, um, uh, let the pressure back off on the hands and it straightens up quite nicely. But they do reckon that uh, the fork brace works well on these so I'm giving it a go. Haven't really ridden it much and certainly haven't had a chance to ride it at speed or in the twisties yet, so we'll see. Um, speaking of handlebars, um, I am at the moment considering uh, shifting these about a bit because with the, with the rear sets um, on there, it has changed the riding position. And what I found out last weekend out with the collective it, it just reconfirmed that um, it's a very upright seating position at the moment. Um, that's because I've got pullback risers um, on here, um, which just clear the tank. So there is there is enough room. And but on lock, the mirrors tend to try and smack against the, uh, and certainly on this side where you've got all the cables, it comes. It does come in to actually touch, but the bars still, still clear, just, just, just clear. Um, so I'm thinking at the moment of moving the, of either going for straight risers or even experimenting with the original one inch ones um, and seeing how that works. Um, before with the mids, it was a bit too cramped up because your feet were here and as as Del pointed out in his reply to me uh, yesterday 
it's quite a it's quite a stretch from the seat to the bars anyway and if you add in extra wide bars then that pulls you for even further forward um, so hmm, we'll see I think it's a bit of experiment and, and uh, see probably worth trying the one inch risers before I go and spend 50 quid on some new risers to find they don't really put the bars where I want them I think I'm going to end up with straight risers maybe three inch maybe four and a half I think they're four and a half at the moment with pull back um, so we'll see a uh, bit of experimentation see what happens uh, the alternative is trackers um, there's another guy who has on one of the forums who has a very similar configuration bike um, to this in many ways um, and in fact I'm he's done some really good write-ups uh, some of which I will be following. Um, now, what else I've done is recently is we have new plugs, new spark plug wires. Um, I didn't really want to replace these because the idea, one of the projects, is to take this back to four spark um, over the winter um, because it's running points at the moment. Um, that's not the right coil. This should have a four, this. This is the sports of sports, so it should be running four spark. Um, so that's a project but the new wires and it now starts much much better than it was um, the old I actually got a bit of a shock off one of the fork uh, plug boots on the old wires so that was a worthwhile replacement um, otherwise it's just bits and pieces around the bike um, things like this new this uh, u-connector uh, oh, right angle connector here, not a U connector, um, for the fuel venting pipe um, which completely perished and fallen off, I think it's in my last video. Um, the new carb uh, definitely needs some work on setup, so another project. Um, however, the one thing that has uh, I did discover uh, last week and needs doing is my license plate mount. Um, now this was always a stopgap measure. Let me see if I can get it where I can see it. Okay this is always a stopgap measure hung on the back here because this just looks silly. I mean this really this really does look silly so um, so this was always going to be moved and my plan was to move it down a little bit down here and mount it somehow across here however what I realized the other day is that it wobbles too much because it's actually cracked right down through here so um, let's see the focus so it's only a question of time yes yeah, that's probably not really visible too much but it's cracked right through here in fact that cracks getting quite big now um, it actually replicates the crack that was in the, this mud guard here that I cut off one of the mounting bolts here was a, had a crack running out of it and clearly there is way too much vibration um, with all this weight of, the, of this holder uh, um, and the actual unit here um, all stuck all hanging off the back end so the solution I think at least on a temporary basis is to convert it to side mount still not massive fan of that so we'll see I have other plans but what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to cut this bracket across here that's the plan anyway and sit it on this bolt here um, so that the actual uh, number plate will sit across it'll sit around here somewhere or probably here so that's the plan but that's going to put it also going to put it right in front of the exhaust. So we'll see how that works. 
it might just about clear a little bit but uh, so that's anyway the plan so number plate is going to be going on there and that's probably really the project for this weekend but it's going to be bits and pieces um, we're going out in a minute uh, so that's what's going to be happening there okay see you in a minute okay so the brackets now made it's um, rather heavy duty for holding a uh, mud guard on I probably could have made it in a much lighter <laughs> thinner metal um, and I also mucked up the making of it because um, I didn't have it hot enough when I was bending here and I've got some cracks so the chances are that thick as it is it may well fracture but if I need to remake it I'll make it in something a little bit thinner I think let's see how, how it actually survives on the bike given the previous bracket and the previous m and the mudguard were both cracked um, I think heavier is probably safer even if unnecessary um, so let's see how it goes putting it on Okay, we can see immediately just how ridiculous uh, these are on here. So, definitely for the chop. So, this bracket will sit here. So, let's see how this works. Um, I'm sure there will be something that I haven't considered that will come in and uh, make this not work I didn't allow paint tolerances on my holes when I uh, drilled them I need to move this mug guard down um, by about uh, a mil maybe two on this side I can get my thumbnail into the crack here it's closer than it was but uh, it still needs to come down a bit more but I'll save that for when I can take the bracket off to remount to put some strength into here so I can carry weight on it Well enough talked. Now I'm using a nylock on this one just to make sure that uh, it stays nicely tightened up. So trying to remember to talk from the nut side. So this now is a very solid heavy bracket. I guess it has the additional 
uh, benefit of adding a bit of support to that. All right, let's see if I can remember what bolts I was planning on using for these. Definitely, I'm sure I remember paint tolerance is what I'm drilling holes. It's such a tedious process. Never a favourite of mine. Bad technique on my part though. There we go. Right. So this now is completely firmly mounted and I could probably pick the bike up with it. So that's not going anywhere. Maybe I'll even grow to come and love for the side mount. So, let me grab the uh, plate itself and uh, come back to you in a moment. Okay, so, this is the uh, mount now on. It's going to look a bit dark. There we go, it's a bit better. Let's see it adjusts again. Um, so, yeah, so it clears the exhaust. Um, so, and it doesn't stick out any further than the exhaust, which is important, which is the main reason it's not this side, because I'd need the clearance, as I said before, I think, um, maybe in my head rather than on camera. Um, so that is there, which gives the back of the bike, yeah. There's two massive things sticking out the back. Okay, another thing I did while I uh, was waiting for paint to dry and such was to shift the resistor on the indicators um, from under here in the uh, wiring. Try and keep this area here as clean as I reasonably can of, of wires. Um, which means down in here 
I have an absolute rat's nest of wires, which is all the connections on the uh, resistor um, connecting the indicator wires, the rear indicator wires, um, which run through here from both sides. So we've got the two indicator wires into the resistor, which is tucked away down there. Uh, so it's a horrendous rat's nest of wiring. I uh, might get a different sort of resistors or resistor in the future to avoid that. It's what I didn't like about the LEDs, um, but uh, which is a little bit disappointing. I've still got the same issue um, now I'm running bulbs, but I can't really complain too much because they're so much better than the LEDs. Uh, um, so that's that done. Um, the, uh, the one comment I will make, since that reminds me, since we are talking of uh, Motone, is I did buy this quite expensive and rather nice uh, billet uh, fuel cap to replace this one. Only it turns out it doesn't work um, because this has a one way valve which uh, allows air out of the tank when it expands, um, which is great, um, except that the Harlech fuel tank for these at this type of sportster already has, you can see here, an air outlet which stops the tank pressurizing and it runs out um, through this rubber petcock, <laughs> this rubber elbow that I've just replaced, um, out down here through a one-way valve and it lodges into this in, into the frame tube. Um, I'm not quite sure why, um, but it does, so that's where it goes. So that lets the air out if the tank overpressures. Now I've actually, since my experiences with this cap, I've unblocked that pipe because <laughs> it was completely blocked. Um, with rust and other shit that have got down there. Um, because I had noticed last summer that it did pressurise um, and would slowly hiss its way out. But the way this system works is the air comes in through this cap. It's got a one-way valve allowing air in and then if there's too much pressure it goes out the tube. This cap, which while it fits very nicely and looks very nice, um, allows air out as well, which means no air is getting into the tank, which means about a mile down the road, and in my case that's when I get onto the motorway, uh, you've run out of air, and that means you've run out of fuel, and you're in lane three on the motorway doing 70 miles an hour, and suddenly you've got no engine, because this has starved your fuel. Now. When I spoke to Motone, oops, and I've dropped it. Um, I have suggested eventually that I try and pull this rubber plug out um, and so allow air both ways, which will cure the problem. Um, I could disconnect that line somewhere and allow that to feed air in. Um, but I'm not overly happy with the idea that if the bike falls over, I've got a a valve here that is going to allow fuel to, to, to actually leak out. Um, whereas this one obviously has got a one-way valve so it only allows air in and it means it doesn't allow air or fuel back out if the bike's lying on its side. Um, and similarly that one, even if the fuel did go down, it, it just ends up in the frame tube so it's not sitting spilling over the road. So this is one expensive paperweight. but. That's the joy of modding bikes. Um, problem with Sportsters is there are quite a few different models and they've been around a long time and each generation is a little bit different to the one before. And clearly this don't work. It's a very nice fuel cap, um, but don't work. So anyway, back to more important things. Um, but it's worthwhile think, remembering if you've got one of these and you're thinking of changing your fuel cap, make sure you buy the right one. So, let's have a look at the, uh, let's put you back on stand and we'll have a look 
at the electrical side because that's the next stage. Okay, carrying on with the Motone theme. Um, so this is the same light I've had on the back here, same light as uh, is on the Bandit. Um, now I'm going to do some modify the wiring a bit because quite clearly this is now a lot closer to the bike than it was before. So that's going to go on there, bolt on there, and the wiring loom, which I've already got dangling down here, as I say, it's, it's, it's a little bit too long. So that's going to go down there and just tuck in there somewhere. This AMP plug, um, if you can see it, it's all right, okay. Right, if I hold it down here, let me change this a little. Right, so AMP plug, um, so it'll plug straight into the. Uh, if you can see it, I'm not sh trouble with the phone. So that will plug straight into there. What if I put it right around? And I've got a bit of spare cable, so I'll probably tuck that in a bit. But um, I have something else in mind, so I'm going to play with this wire um, first. I'm going to cut through it here and I'm going to put in um, the wiring for a second backlight if I decide to use one. So, okay, I'm going to carry on with that and I'll come back to you in a minute um, because it, you don't really need to watch me uh, bolting this back on. Okay, see you in the guys in a moment. Okay, I changed my mind as usual. Um, so I've just wired in just to mount it and test it um, and I'll rework the wire a bit later on. So, so as we see, so all working fine, um, like the indicators, Are they a little bit fast, no they look okay, yep all looks good. So I could just tuck that wire away, but as I say, I'm, I might leave cutting it until I make my mind up about a secondary light, because after all, there's no point cutting the loom for that and then uh, changing my mind what I'm doing. So let's just move it here. So really all I need to do now is to tuck this spare wire away remount the ignition unit, this doesn't work by the way because I'm running points, um, remount the ignition unit um, in place, put the seat back on and we're ready to go, go to the back, back on the road, okay, I'll see you again in a moment. Right, electrics are all buttoned away now, I uh, reorganised them a little bit so the indicator wiring was a little bit less chewed up, um, mission units bolted back in, everything is working, uh, test that again in a moment, so let's get the seat back on and move on to the next thing, one moment. Okay, so
Let's just double check. They're still are working. But real light works. Real light works. Indicator. Indicator. Yeah. Hazards. Yep. All looking good.